Well, the storm has passed and pleasant summer weather has returned. And so have the weekend boaters, which makes sailing out of a rather tight harbor entrance even a little more challenging. Presently, my challenge is pulling the spade anchor out of the muddy bottom. I find the best procedure here is just pull the anchor road up short and leave tension on the chain and then walk away for about five or ten minutes. And with vertical tension, the anchor will work its way out. Anchors away. You can see her bow is falling away from the gentle breeze. Now it's mostly a downwind run out of the inner harbor. So I'm just going to let her fall away and then set the staysail and sail out under the staysail. Standard procedure is to raise the mainsail first. However, with boats anchored close by on either side, I'm not sure I'll have enough room to gather speed and get the boat under control with the rudder. So it's better to use the balance. Since we're heading off downwind, put the headsail up first and just let it steer the boat initially. Now the general strategy here is to sail out of the inner harbor to the more outer harbor um, east of Bull Island. And then we'll round up there, drop anchor, and then set the mainsail where we have more room. And then I get to the outer harbor and there's a whole bunch more anchored boats. Uh, there should be enough room here to raise the mainsail. And I have that anchor on very short scope, so just making sure it doesn't drag while I'm trying to raise the main and go through maneuvers here. And now we've weighed anchor and finally on our way out of Hadley Harbor. Once outside into Buzzards Bay, now we're on the windward leg of our windward lured, where the weather mark is Quick's Hull. Now we're coming up on Quick's Hull here. Hopefully we'll make it through before dark. We don't have too much further. Um, and the current has just turned in our favor, so we should have a favorable tidal current going through and then a favorable current to uh, the Tarpaulin Cove. And it'll be after dark by the time we get to Tarpaulin, but uh, Tarpaulin's easy to get in and out of. So, uh, so I don't anticipate any troubles with that. So, I think our remaining sailing challenge for today, after our first challenge of sailing out of Hadley Harbor on a Sunday afternoon with boats going everywhere, um, is to tack through Quick's Hole. But, uh, I mean, Woods Hole is far more direct, but Woods Hole is, is much more tricky with the currents. And, uh, and with these light winds, I wouldn't want to chance Woods Hole. Um, so, Quick still has fairly strong current, but it's much wider, and it's just a straight shot right through. So, uh, you, you don't have a bend, and you don't have rocks right in the middle of it. So, uh, it was definitely safer to go through Quick's Hall. Two days later, 
We have light southerly winds and a decent forecast to set off for Maine. And these light breezes, she's going to need all the rags I can crowd on her. So let's get that staysail up. She's beginning to gather away here. Once we're clear of the anchored boat, go forward and get that Yankee up. That'll give her significantly more driving power. You can see how much speed she's picked up. But you can pile on all the rags in the world. They're not going to do any good if there's no wind. As soon as I exited Tarpaulin Cove, the fog rolled in and the wind dropped to nothing. However, we're getting into the easterly setting of flooding current. And I'm a little worried we're getting too close to that shore. So I've got the scaling oar out to help with that. See how the current is just we're out the current, it's just taking them. So the main thing is uh, just stay off that shore. But hallelujah, the wind begins to work its way back in. Guess what? The wind died again. Now we saw a favorable current. And uh, we're just off of West Chop. Halfway between West Chop and Woods Hole. So there are some shoals we shouldn't touch. Though there's a couple of six foot spots. We're getting dragged toward them right now. So maybe this wind. I can see a guy coming out of Vineyard Haven there. He's got some He's got a subtly wind, so maybe, maybe this subtly will finally work in, and uh, we can finally be on our way here. We're not going to make it out of Round Shoal though before the current changes, not by a long shot. Well, I assume this guy's engine works in the Catalina here, so I'm giving him kudos for per perseverance. Most people would have flipped the starter switch by now. I mean, we've had, uh, and the wind has died away again about a half hour ago. So we've been sitting here for at least another half an hour with no wind. The tide has turned. So I've just looked at the GPS and we've started going backwards now. Um, I can see that sailboat just right off our starboard bow. It's got nice breeze. So I'm going to try to work my way over there, see if we can hook into those southerlies. We might be starting to get them now, but uh, we got we got ferocious contrary current now. It's about a knot and a half to two knots that's dragging us toward uh, toward East Chop right there. So it's about 8 p.m. the 14th of July, Bastille Day. We have finally picked up these southerly winds. I think uh, we were in a... Uh, oh, we got fog here. We were in a... Uh, just a hole that was created by Martha's Vineyard. So I think we're finally getting out from under the... Getting outside the wind hole there, or the bubble. Um, Jeez, I'm hearing a diesel here. Let's just check the AIS for a second. So, uh, however, we still got about two hours of foul current, so 
Um, it seems to be down to about a knot now. I'd say we're fighting about a knot, maybe a knot and a quarter of foul current. But uh, we're going we're to have this for another couple hours, then it should turn in our favor. Well, it's around 2 in the morning here, and we're exiting the Great Round Shell Channel along with a bunch of fishing boats, and some of them were sport fishes. Because the ones that were pinging on AIS, I could see we're doing over 25 knots. So those seem to have passed. Um, as usual, the North Atlantic is not letting us go. So as you can, if you can hear the sail sliding, you guessed it, the wind just died again. So we have very little wind. Uh, hopefully, I mean the forecast is basically kind of about seven knots or so, six to nine knots of wind all night. So let's hope this comes back in again. It's pitch black out, it's pea soup fog. That's right, I can't believe these guys, these sport fish is doing 25 knots, you can't see a freaking thing out here. So, um, so we're still in among the shoals, which is just the worst place for this wind to die on us. And, but we're still doing a little over two and a half knots because we still got some favorable current kind of flushing us out. So that's good. So just, we just continue to hope and pray here. It is the 15th of July, 2021, and we are at 4144 North and 6930 West, or about 20 miles east of Chatham, Massachusetts. Uh, we are heading north, north-northwest up the Great South Channel. We exited the Great Round Shoal Channel last night. Um, so this trip to Maine is just turning out to be quite the adventure. So yesterday, uh, as I showed my video, we started off with a nice light southerly breeze, tacked out of Tarpaulin Cove. And then uh, no sooner got out of Tarpaulin Cove and were becalmed. And uh, most of the day we just drifted down Vineyard Sound with the current and uh, being mindful of shoals and dangers and managing to get enough wind just to sort of maneuver ourselves out of the way. And then we picked up uh, pretty brisk, yeah, about 10, 12 knots, uh, southerlies last night. I went charging away toward, uh, uh, toward Great Point, which is the uh, northeastern corner of Nantucket and the entrance to the uh, the Great Round Shell Channel. And uh, wouldn't you know, we just about make it through the Great Round Shell Channel and the wind just dies away to nothing again. And then uh, we got all these fishing boats going in and out and some of them must have been sport fishes because uh, in the AIS they were doing over 25 knots. And not all of them had AIS and I could hear one just roaring up on me like crazy and I called the guy in the radio and luckily he responded and uh, they said yeah we got you cap about a quarter mile and I said you must have me on radar and said that's correct so at least I know my radar reflector works but still roaring along in the middle of the night and as you can see we've got dense fog we've had dense fog since uh, yesterday evening the fog rolled in and uh, it hasn't left us um, so, so that was fun, and then I uh, finally get out into a little more open water, and I doze off for an hour or two this morning, and I wake up, and the, uh, take a look at the AIS, and, uh, the radio's off. So that's funny, I don't recall turning the radio off, I never turn the radio off before, I, especially before I'm going to lay down for a nap, and then, uh, Kind of checked around a bit and then I saw the battery voltage was 5 volts. 
So, I realized what had happened was uh, the battery was dead. And uh, so yeah, this is one of the downsides of lithium batteries is it's, it's impossible to tell what the state of charge is until you get all the way uh, to one or the other, to all the way full or all the way empty. It just generally, it's about 12.9 to 13.1 volts, uh, no matter where you are. And uh, still, I was surprised, though, that I had uh, drained the battery all the way down, even though we've had some cloudy days. We have actually quite a few cloudy days. And uh, with the fridge running on it, I guess it's not too surprising. I was running a deficit. Uh, but then I think I found the real culprit was uh, the main solar panels, the charge controller there. I found out uh, that was not charging the batteries. So just the forward panels. You know, the battery was the battery was only getting charged from the forward panels, and uh, that was a result of one of the terminals going into the charge controller was corroded. So I had to kind of do a, Ro a Rube Goldberg there, um, and. Uh, drill and tap a bigger screw in and uh, put a ring terminal and it's uh, it's kind of uh, um, it's kind of a kludge as we used to say um, and so so that was interesting and uh, and we've still had fishing boats around us today we got those uh, those uh, tuna boats you know where they have the uh, they have the mast in this really long bowsprit with a catwalk on them. Uh, I think that's for either spotting fish or harpooning fish. Uh, I haven't seen those in a long time. And uh, so, things seem to have quieted down. I don't hear the rumbles of any diesels around, which is good. Um, cause th these guys charge around in thick fog and they're just trusting their AIS and their radar. Um, makes me a little nervous. See, we got hardly any wind here and fog. Uh, we had wind earlier. It's just up and down, up and down. Um, if we can believe the weather forecast, these winds are supposed to come southwest overnight and pick up to uh, around 15 knots. So uh, getting fairly fresh. Um, and we got about 120 miles to go to Maine to uh, Harpswell. So. If we're lucky, we might make it in. Well, we got light till late in the evening. We might make it in tomorrow evening. We'll see.